Hi guys, thanks again for being here. I'm Trent, and um, I, I guess I don't really have to like sell you on Big Team Beer or anything, which is cool. But I will highlight some of the things that we think is really interesting about Big Team DB and um, what um, you know why we're all here today. Um, so, but I, I, I like to give it in context for all of you. Some of you are newer here, some of not. So just to sort of bring everyone up to speed. Um, so let's get started. Um, you, you well know Bitcoin, magic internet money. Got people a lot of excited, very excited. Um, it's actually been around for I think basically ten years now. So pretty cool, right? And during uh, when people started thinking more about Bitcoin and what powered it, blockchains, there was uh, um, you know quotes going around things like Bitcoin is a database for the planet and blockchains are databases. And this is really an aspiring thing, right? Like a database for the planet. That's like a really amazing idea, right? Um, but of course, uh, people ran into issues of scale, right? Um, and queries, right? We have block explorers, all this, but what about a query language, et cetera? So um, while there was the dreams of the sort of database for the planet, those dreams didn't line up with the actual reality. But what if we actually did have a database for the planet, right? Or a database that was um, very well suited to consortiums and sharing and so on, right? What if we could truly get a database at planetary scale? Really a database, really at planetary scale. So a quick history of databases, right? The very first one that really took off was Oracle in the early 80s, right? The, the house that Larry Ellison built. Interestingly, these are the, if you've ever been to the San Francisco airport, uh, right next to it, uh, as you drive past, um, this is the Oracle offices, and it's literally the icons for databases, right? So Larry Ellison does have a sense of humor. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and then, you know, there's other sort of blue ocean databases that came along, right? Um, in the early 2000s, along came MySQL. And up till then, all these sort of um, SQL databases that were usable by the enterprise or even businesses, you would have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to deploy. Um, MySQL was, was much more lightweight and really well suited to startups for the web, etc. So they kind of won as this sort of blue ocean database. Um, and then in the mid 2000s, along came MongoDB um, and others. And this was really handling the challenges of um, the web, which had become massive, and the internet at large. Um, and it was possible via flexible schemas, right? These document stores. So this was sort of another blue ocean database that emerged to solve specific problems of scale. So databases have been around a long time. Um, it's a you know, huge, huge, huge market. Obviously the developers in the room know that it's a, an essential tool of the overall stack, right? Alongside processing, alongside file systems, et cetera, right? Um, we see that blockchains are databases uh, and they're just, once again, a new type of database, a blue ocean database, that maybe the previous um, characteristics weren't quite as important, but there's some new ones that make it really interesting, right? And we see it as three characteristics, decentralization, immutability, and scale. Um, decentralization, which means that um, it's really easy for a, a group of organizations to work together to share their, um, their infrastructure, their databases, etc. cetera. Um, immutable, so once you've written something, it's like it's etched into stone. Right? Uh, and this is excellent for audit trails, for provenance, um, and so on. And finally, the idea of native assets. You own an item if you have the private key. And that item might be tagged to something physical via a riddle and code um, chip, or it might be something digital, like digital art. Right? So if any one of these characteristics is interesting for your application, then a blockchain database might be a really good fit. So this, was a, this is our hy hypothesis with BigchainDB. Uh, we are um, ab blockchain database. Very quickly under the hood, how, how did we do it? Um, we realized, guess what? There's already these amazing, um, very scalable databases out there, right? MongoDB, um, DocumentDB with Microsoft on, on Azure, and so on. So why not stand on the shoulders of giants, leverage this uh, really existing, not just research, but development technology that has been developed over the decades? So we built on top of Mongo, as well as Rethink and more in the future, um, and we just engineered in these characteristics on top. By doing this, we retained the benefits of Mongo, et cetera, but we got these new characteristics, right? And so you can kind of view BigTeamDB as a best of both worlds. It's um, bringing in the benefits that traditional blockchains had, right? Immutability, decentralized assets, but also maintaining the scalability, the queryability, and a, lot, a large degree of the operationalized nature. MongoDB has been around for 10 years, right? Um, it's hardened. It's used by more than half of the S&P 500. So why not leverage that? And our code base, of course, is tiny compared to Mongo's. So you know, it's, it's much more uh, easy to work with them. Uh, so overall, how does this work in, in the staff, right? You've got traditional compute infrastructure. Here's an example of a cloud deployment. 
Um, at the top, you've got applications running on some platform, like Azure, um, or some of the other unmentioned clouds. Um, and then below, you've got different things. So people do know EC2 better than the Azure equivalent, so I put that there. That's a cloud-based processing. Cloud-based file system like S3 for media blobs, or maybe HDFS, a, a big data file system. And then databases, right? Um, so we've got MySQL as a traditional SQL database, MongoDB, or uh, with Atlas as the, the cloud version, and so on and so forth. So as developers, you see this. This is boring, straightforward, like what you do, right? Uh, it's actually not that boring because cloud stuff is really rocking and rolling. It's, it's really interesting, right? So this is a centralized compute infrastructure. But then we can get a bit more decentralized, right? If you, um, and at first, people are like, hey, let's use Bitcoin as, as, a, as a database, right? And this is actually where we started, as described, um, four years ago, right? Um, using, pretending basically Bitcoin is this blockchain. But blockchain as a noun isn't a very good fit, right? It's sort of like a, a square peg in a round hole. Um, what makes much more sense is to say, hey, guess what? There are file systems, there are databases, there is processing. And for each of these, you can start to decentralize pieces of those one at a time, right? And so for the database, this is where um, BigchainDB fits in, right? So you can leverage if you want, keep the existing infrastructure that you have or existing uh, development environments, uh, keep around your, your file system, uh, HDFS or otherwise, the processing, uh, the platform, et cetera, right? And just in that one place where it adds the value, maybe for storing who owns what, that's where BigchainDB can be. Or the cloud, um, the public version, which is IPDB. Uh, and of course, we can even go fully decentralized, right? So we can have decentralized processing, AKA smart contracts, right? A much better label is decentralized processing, by the way, right? Because these things aren't smart or contracts, so this is a better label. And this is where things like Ethereum come in, Hyperledger, Tendermint, and so on. For file systems, we've got things like IPFS, decentralized file system. For database, right, once again, BigchainDB, IPDB. And then, of course, if you want some sort of e-gold or e-cash um, uh, functionality, that's where things like Bitcoin and Zcash fit, right? So these things are complementary. If you want to go fully decentralized, great. But a lot of the time, all you really need is in one place, such as database, right? And so that's what um, really, to, to us, this is the healthy way to think about it. And we see that there's this maturing in the overall blockchain ecosystem. And it is moving towards fundamental building blocks of the compute stack. Uh, so deploying, you know, uh, we kind of see things as, if you're an organization, you're already working with Mongo or MySQL or otherwise, um, then you're, it's like you're adding one more database to your overall stack, right? And in this case, it just happens to be a blockchain database, right? Now, of course, um, it's a, across the consortium or publicly, but um, it's relatively straightforward. It's not having to uh, rethink everything. And, um, it's just very um, straightforward addition. Um, so getting started, you know, you guys, development side, you'll, you'll be used to this, but if you go to bigchaindb.com, you click the quick start, and it takes you through a tutorial. Um, you don't have to be a blockchain expert to use this, just like you don't have to know the guts of um, MySQL in order to use MySQL, right? You just have to know a bit about querying. So in this case, this is part of the Python interface. Um, you generate some private keys, uh, uh, sorry, a private key and a public key. Um, you create a transaction that has some um, information inside things like um, maybe in this case the digital asset payload which is saying hello big team DB um, you sign that transaction you push it to the network that's it right so this uh, literally when you go through the tutorial you can go through it in 20 minutes 30 minutes right so you don't have to be an expert you don't have to learn in a whole new computer language or anything it's just very straightforward right and then the assets it's straight up JSON uh, if you're a computer scientist a developer it's very straightforward to use right so this is uh, reading the transaction the, the whole goal for us is to make it look, act, feel like a database, right? So it's got those benefits. Very quickly, use cases. Um, obviously, many of you guys have ideas here today. Awesome. This might help inspire you. Uh, I'll be quick. Uh, Resonate, it's a startup here in Berlin. Uh, they are doing decentralized streaming music. Um, they actually just released their beta last week, so you guys can play with it. It's live with Big TV. Uh, Ascribe, this is where we started. This is uh, provenance of art. Um, so basically, it's luxury goods, but it's for art. Mostly digital, but people are using it for physical as well. And this is where uh, our resident art expert helped us out a lot, Masha, of course. So being a founder, it's um, authentic. This is actually about KYC, so decentralized identity. They're starting with KYC, uh, knowing your customer, but then moving much more towards sovereign personal data, right? So much broader scope. They're also a startup partly in Berlin and elsewhere. Benben, -Ben, decentralized land registry. Um, in this case, helping uh, second and third world countries where the governments aren't so trustworthy. So instead, you can use a public net where you have a, tr uh, a trusted registry of who owns what land. And this actually helps the cycle of poverty. 
uh, Recruit. This is a $10 billion Japanese conglomerate. This is uh, about HR fraud. So if I claim that I have a PhD from K. Leuven, which I do, but do you believe me? Then um, it's going to be it's much easier to use um, it's where it's crypto signed and on a ledger. So we work with Recruit for more than a year now, actually. R D R sorry R D R E of course Energy etc. Too. We're working with you guys. Happy to have you here. It's awesome. Um, Tangent 90. This is about transparency in the medical supply chain. Uh, I P D B. This is basically the public deployment. So uh, for anyone who wants to use I P D B, if you're a startup, if you're an individual, you want to just put your data onto some public global database for the planet, then great. We have set up this nonprofit organization to make that really easy called IPDB, Interplanetary Database. And um, anyone can use it, right? The sweet spots really are around sovereign personal data and IP, but it also is a really good fit um, for even supply chain and otherwise. What's nice about this, you don't have to think about governance, right? Or if you're doing just a pilot project where you have 10 or 30 organizations that want to try something out, you don't have to go around and try to figure out how to set up a consortium. Instead, uh, you guys just start plugging into IPDB. Um, and by the way, too, IPDB is running on Azure. Um, so the main deployment is Azure. So we're happy with that. Um, so we many, many people are mentioning, so there we go. So um, There's many more applications, too, uh, that we're working with. Uh, you know, banking, voting, national identity systems, social media filter bubbles, and more. Um, so to summarize for today, uh, you know, we are a scalable blockchain database for the planet and the enterprise, right? And today, the next two days, it's all about um, hacking, shipping, building, um, exploring, right? So thanks once again. A pleasure to have you all. Cheers. And I guess questions.